thank you, Lindsay. Um, as Lindsay said, I'm Lisa Crowley. I am the um, project director for DRA for our rooms project. Um, we are partnering with FAST, as Lindsay mentioned. There's about 20 um, FAST employees that have moved to our state and have um, moved into our building. And um, there's, there's five um, subject matter experts from DRA, as well as myself as the director, um, that we've really put in a lot of time and effort um, into, this, into this program. And I think the, the taxpayers of our state are really going to benefit um, I think they're going to really love what they see. Um, and, and beyond that, you know, there's, there's six of us that are on this project full time, but I really have to sort of um, say that this has been such a humbling project because, and I might get emotional, I'm really sorry, we're rolling out on Monday here. Um, the DRA has just the effort from Lindsay's office you know, down to our mail openers, it has involved everyone, and everyone has really put their heart and soul into into this product. Um, so I'm really excited to, to be here today with, you know, two of our vendors to show you um, a small piece of, of what we've what we've built. So if Kat and Mike could come on. As we get everything set up, I'll just introduce myself. Hi, everybody, I'm Mike Dees. I'm with Fast Enterprises. Uh, we came out here today, today to give kind of a general overview of specific topics with uh, Granite Tax Connect, including enrollment and third-party access, um, gaining access to any client accounts that are associated uh, to clients that you have, as well as if we have time at the end, because we tried to make this 15 minutes or as short as we could, we'll try to run through how we do a payment or file a return um, inside of the system. So. Kat, if you will, we will go ahead and we will hit the create one button over underneath our logon panel. Um, this will bring up the request that is used to create a web logon inside of Granite Tax Connect. So this would be for, we'll create one for Kat for one of her clients. So Kat, as a tax professional, would be creating a web logon to be able to gain access to her client's accounts to file taxes and make payments and what have you on Granite Tax Connect. Um, we get to the tax professional question where it's going to say, are you, you know, the certified person that should be gaining access to the account, or are you the taxpayer? When we select that we are going to be the tax professional, that's going to set up our kind of accountant style logon, where we act as the um, tax accountant or the CPA associated to them. So to do this enrollment, you have to have information from the taxpayer themselves, so you can see we have the taxpayer identification number, this is the social security number, and we have to have to have tax um, account type specific information. So a tax account for our role at one purposes is going to be a meals and rentals tax account. So you can put in the meals and rentals license number associated to the tax account for the taxpayer you're trying to get access to. I know I'm talking quickly, we have a lot of get through, so bear with me as we go. Um, as soon as we enter in the information, we'll go ahead and hit next. This is where we create our own logon. It's important to know that your logon or your username is an email. That email is also going to be the email that we use to send notices and correspondence to you as we go through. So every time that we submit a web request, a payment, a return, um, we send some kind of messaging through, uh, that's going to go to that email that's associated to it as well. So we'll go ahead and click next. Standard password requirements. And as most of our web requests that we have set up in Grant Tax Connect, you have to have an electronic signature um, to say that this is you know, really what I'm trying to submit. I'm certified to submit this. So we'll go ahead and submit it. As soon as we submit, we'll get to a confirmation page. This confirmation page um, will also be sent out with a notification to the email address that is associated to your web logon. This page also has the confirmation number. The confirmation number acts as a specific identifier for this request that you've submitted. So try to keep that. Um, it'll be good for reference for later. Um, since we did the enrollment request to create our own web logon, let's go ahead and try and log in. So we'll go ahead and Kat will log in as herself. 
and we'll get to the two-step verification page. This is a requirement, we turn this on, you have to have two-step verification. This does have a lot of sensitive data inside of this application, so this is going to set up a method that you can get a verification code to. So if you pick a cell phone number or an email address, we'll send that code off to you. You'll be able to type that in as soon as you get it and get into the system. You choose it the first time that you sign in. After you do that the first time, that will be the one that you use going forward. In the future, if you wanted to change it, there's always a place to go back in and update it if you wanted to change it to a new cell phone number or something. So we'll go ahead and hit save on this for our two-step verification and we'll get the security code. You won't have access to the easy button. We have access to easy buttons, it's just for show. Now that we're in, CAT now is inside of Granite Tax Connect, and you can see we don't have any access to the taxpayer that we are validating to. That's for security purposes. You don't gain access directly to your client's account until your client has approved access to you. Um, meaning, when we run through the process we just did for enrollment, the taxpayer is gonna get notification via a letter, and it's gonna say who is requesting access to their account, what account they're requesting access to, that taxpayer can then take that letter, and they can hand it to you, or if they have a Grant Tax Connect account for themselves, they can go in and grant access to you, which you would then get a notification saying, hey, taxpayer gave you access, go ahead and log in. Um, to do the request yourself, you can go down to this third party access and say, I wanna add access, or request access to my client's accounts. So this is the process after we have a web log on, after we have access or don't have access to one of our clients, this is how we would add access to another client. So if you have multiple clients, you can do this. The reason we make you do it in the very beginning when you're creating a logon is so that we know you should have access to the system. If you're going to create access, then you probably should be linking yourself to a taxpayer first off. If you wanted to get access to other accounts associated to the same taxpayer or different taxpayers, or different clients for all of you, you'd be able to go into this request. As soon as you're in this request, you type in your taxpayer information, which we already did on the previous step, and we would go in and start listing the accounts. You can tell that this process is essentially the same as what we did for enrollment. It's just now we can add multiple accounts for each one of the accounts that is under our taxpayer. So in this case, I think we're adding access to a Jacob Stone, and he has two MNR license locations, so he has two MNR tax accounts. We can request access to both of them. Of course, when we finish this, we'll sign our lives away. And we'll get the confirmation screen again that lets us know that we've submitted this request with the confirmation number. This will also send out that letter every time that we have this request. That letter goes to this request very specifically. It'll list out, you know, Cat Allen has requested to get account manager access, which is third party access to these accounts. And it'll list out any of the ones that you put there. And again, they can provide you that letter or they can go in themselves and approve access that you requested. So uh, since we don't have time for mail to go out and get back to us, we've already set this up. So we'll log in as me and we will go and grant ourselves access to an account. So this is my, my web logon. So I created this because I am the accountant for the two clients that we'll go ahead and gain access to. We've already done the request access to my client's accounts request. They were provided the letters, they provided those letters to me. So we'll go ahead and we'll go back into the third party access menu and we will add access with the request letters. Every letter is gonna have a specific letter ID up at the top of it. That's the designation to say this letter is going to the granting of access that is specified on that letter. So as soon as we type it in and we hit next, it's going to give us the summary of these are what was requested and when it was requested. So now that I have that letter, I can see I requested access to the three MNR tax accounts and I'm going to be able to give myself access since they provided it to me. So as soon as I hit submit, we'll get that handy confirmation number and confirmation page. When we hit OK, now you can see Rose Garden Incorporated is up there at the top left. This is because I now have access to my client. So my client as Rose Garden Incorporated, 
um, is now verified underneath my logon. So if I go to the summary panel, I can now get to the accounts that are uh, designated under that taxpayer. So you can see there's multiple accounts. We have the Rosemary's Garden, Weaving Confectionery, and the Iron Grill. Each one of those being a different tax account underneath my client. So every one of these account panels is going to have its own information panels next to it. Top one on the M&R accounts is going to be any of your recent filing activity. If you have a return that's submitted, it's due, it's going to look at the current filing that should be done, which is we just hit our due date for September, and it doesn't look like we filed a return. So we can see that that one's actually due, and since it's kind of that red bolded color, we can see that that is actually a late return. And then we have the account summary where we can see we still have an outstanding balance of about $30. Every account will show those things. Um, you can favorite these accounts, move them up and down, um, and get into really a lot of that maintenance stuff um, that we want to do with these accounts. We will go ahead and go back into the More tab, and we will add access to our other client, Jacob Stone, using the same process that we did before. We will add access with that request letter. We can see now that we have that letter ID, this is the account that we requested access for and when we requested it. As soon as we submit this, we will be able to gain access to it. We can see that Rose Garden Incorporated is still there, but now under it we have a new link that we can click, which is our switch taxpayer business. This is where we can go to to see the summary of the different clients that we have. So each one of these is a, is a customer, is what we call them, or a taxpayer that's associated to the tax accounts. So as we can see, I still have Rose Garden, but I also have a new one of Jacob's, Jacob Stone. So if I click into Jacob Stone, I can now see any of the accounts that are associated to him as well. Perfect. Um, I think one thing I missed to cover on the last portion of it was this Action Center. We not only have the panels that'll kind of show you a brief overview of an account of what, what didn't you file, what did you file, there's also an action center where we try to give as much information to you when you log into your accounts or start to access your clients. Um, this will include if I've missed a return, if I need to make a payment, maybe for um, in the future it'll be, hey, there's some kind of estimated form, you know, for MET that you have to file a non-binding estimate. Those aren't haven't, or haven't been filed yet, so those would be the notifications there. These are really things that we want to bring to your attention of, hey, these haven't been done, they probably should be done. Um, if we go back and switch taxpayer, and we'll go back to Rose Garden. If we click Action Center on this one, we can see, hey, I have a balance I need to pay, and I'm missing my return. Okay, so let's go to the top right-hand corner into the Accountant Center. The Accountant Center, when you create a third-party logon um, to your clients, is going to give you the ability to have an overview of all of your clients all at one time. So this is really handy because if I go into that manage and payment, manage payments and returns, I now have a list of all of my clients all in the same place for every tax account that they have. So you can see the top two, Stones Tavern and Rosemary Garden, are for the two clients that I have access to, but I can see them in the same list. Okay, we'll keep going from that. So let's get out of the tax, the accountant center. And we'll go back into Rose Garden. If we go to the summary panel, we'll go ahead and file this return that hasn't been filed yet. So using that file now link, we'll link right into the return. And Kat will kind of breeze through this as I'm talking until we get to an important portion of it. This is a step-based, most of our web requests are going to be step-based to walk you through each step that you need to take and what you need to fill out. Uh, very specifically in asking the information, it's grouped in how you would see that paper form as well. So if you have the paper form in your hand and you're running down, it's just going to kind of go in sections for that to kind of break it up a little bit to make it more understandable. We can see here, because we're filing this return late, it's not going to let us file commission. You don't get that if you're late. So we'll keep going through and we'll get to this last question here where it says, would you like to make a payment with your return? There's two different types of payments that you can do with these returns. They're not required when you're filing these. You can select no and have an outstanding balance, but if you select yes, you'll be able to select between the two different options, which is going to be paying by a card, credit card, or using a check-in and savings account. For this one, we'll just go ahead and use the check-in and savings account. 
and we'll fill out our account information that's associated to the payment. Of course, we have an easy button. You don't get that for real. Uh, important thing here, we're making con confirmation of the account number to make sure it's the right one. And we can see Cat has now selected that save this payment channel for future use. This is going to now log that payment channel information that we have above that um, and store it for us to use it as a default later. Um, you'll see that as soon as we get into the next section of this, but that is a good thing for us to have is to say, you don't have to account or type in this account routing number every time that you want to make payment for this client. We know this is their accounting information or this is the accounting information that I use for them. And so we'll go ahead and enter it there. We'll confirm the amount of the payment so we make sure that we're taking the amount that we say we want you to take. And we'll hit the next button. We asked some extra questions at the end of this one because it's an M&R return, such as if you want to attach supporting documentation um, or if this is the final return, or final return as before, the supporting documentation, and then we'll go ahead and get to the electronic signature. So you can see my signature has now changed to cat. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and submit this. Again, confirmation page, this is going to be a summary of information that we filed with this return. That also gets sent out to that email address that's associated to my web logon so I can keep track of these things. So now when we hit OK, we can see that now inside of our context panel, we have now submitted our September return. That will stay out there until it's time for those things to process. So if you file something, it doesn't just instantly process. We'll run things a little bit later in the day as batch processing. Um, and that will stay there. If you wanted to go back into it and view it again, at any point you can hit the view submission and that will go back into that. Um, we have an outstanding balance here, so let's go ahead and pay that outstanding balance too. And we'll pay with the checkings and savings account. Now we can see this payment channel here that we've set up as a default, that is already there. So that was the same information that we entered in on the return. We said for this taxpayer and for me, I wanna go ahead and save this so I can use that later. So we're gonna do that confirm the amount and hit submit. This is going to have you enter your password that's associated to your web logon to act as your electronic signature. And when we hit OK, we go into our confirmation screen again. And we can see that now that has impacted the account. Now on those screens, there's a date that says, when do I want my payment to be made? If this was post dated, um, we wouldn't take the money until that point, so we can post a payment to say 10 days from now I want you to take this amount from this bank account that I provided to you. Um, however, that payment, since it's pending now, still has an impact on the account balance on that account. Um, that is, it will have an account balance here until it processes and then you'll see the real payment process inside of any of the posting panels as you drill down farther into the account. I think that was all that I had for my demo. Unless there's anything else you wanted me to show? Okay, that's great. Fantastic. Thank you.